can we get started oh great uh, hi good afternoon everyone uh, i i'm sure everyone of you is hungry so this is going to be last session i'm going to be talking about fos in building telecom networks 5g and beyond um so the overview of the talk is going to be uh, i'll first cover a little bit about 5g network architecture we have uh, had a session about it yesterday it might be a little bit of repetition but that's fine now i'll discuss some main project uh, for pr projects in free and open source space and finally i'd like to conclude with my own contributions in this okay a little bit about me so i work with a company called hypernoise software labs so i mostly do system software work uh, i have been a fos enthusiast so some of the first uh, open source project that we released in open source was about i don't know 20 years back uh, i'm more interested in building uh software for telecom infrastructure so the stuff that makes your telecom networks work like the towers and beyond uh i have contributed to several projects in rust in this uh in this particular space and uh, i'll be talking about those as well so what does a 5g network architecture look like so if you see the evolution of telecom networks from 1g which was mainly analog to 2g then 3g started having some packet based networks to 5g the network architecture has not substantially changed from what it is uh, here so what you have so your phones on the left hand side connect to the towers uh, then the towers are actually connecting uh, to what is called as a ran or a radio access network uh, and then there is a core network so the reason there is a split like this because the functions performed by the uh, the radio access network and core network are different so that's why there is a split like this uh, this has been the architecture for all the generation of software telecom uh, generation right up to this so but what has changed in 5g is 5g has come up with this concept of what is called as an open ran okay uh, what is new here is uh, the the towers that you saw there are the are used that you see here are the radio units uh, these are then connected to what is called as a distributed units uh, or dus and then they are in turn connected to uh, the centralized unit or cu Uh, what happens here is most of the radio transmission is done by your RUs. Then you have uh, in the OSI network stack uh, there is layer two, which is MAC layer. So most of the MAC layer and layer two functionality typically happens in DU, and CU is uh, what is responsible for terminating the uh, over-the-air sessions for the users. Okay, what is new? Uh, this has been similar architecture was there in the previous generation also. What is new here in uh, 5G is there is something called as a near real time ran intelligent controller and uh, then there is something called as a non it uh, real time ran intelligent controller so these controllers are essentially uh, platforms for building applications what do you mean by that is we will see some of those uh, but it's essentially what is called as control loop applications in the ran what it means is uh, taking users from one particular cell to another uh, performing the handover and things like that so this is what is mainly happening in the uh, uh, th these are the platforms that provide this okay uh, if we look at quickly look at some of the functions that are provided uh, by uh, the radio access network and the core network and that's why there was a split like this uh, so the on the radio side it's a shared resource so you need to multiplex users on the radio network so that is provided by uh, the ran network and it also provides a connectivity to the core network and things like handoff so for example when you are traveling in metro or something you 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 do not experience a loss of connection because there is a seamless handover happens from one tower to another so some of that functionality happens in the ran network uh, things like user authentication uh, uh, is happening in the core network where uh, based on your sim your whether what kind of services you are allowed to use whether you are allowed to use roaming services all of those decision happen and then core network is something that actually finally connects to the uh, user uh, so this is what the 5g core network looks like uh, we have seen this already yesterday uh, so uh, on the top of it you have this something called as amf smf all of this so this is called as far access and mobility function session management function so this is what is called as a control path function so what do we mean by control path function is something that is responsible for setting up user sessions uh making sure users ha users have access to the service that they have subscribed for so that is called as a control path function uh for example when you actually um, connect your phone on <clears throat> on a network when you see that 5g or that kind of logo on your on the uh, on the signal 
that is when your session is established and that is what happens in the control path. User path function is where the actual data transfer takes place. So uh, let's say you're watching live television, uh, live match of World Cup 23. Uh, so the actual streaming, the data that goes uh, happens through the uh, happens over the user path function. So this is what the functionality is provided by the uh, control path, uh, <coughs> uh, provided by the core network. Next, we are going to see at some of the FOSS projects uh, in uh, in this particular uh, in this space. Uh, so uh, so RAN has got uh, following projects. So Open Air Interface is probably the most famous project. It is having the uh, widest traction. So it has got an implementation, uh, if you remember the diagram, it has got an implementation for the CU, uh, which is the centralized unit, uh, DU and RU. It has also got implementation for the user side stack, uh, which is what, what runs on your phone. And it, it can actually do all the emulation of the telecom uh, protocols as well. So uh, you can actually run all of this on a single laptop, I have done this and uh, you can actually tr try out how these things work. Okay, so this is what uh, Open Air Interface project is there. Uh, ORAN SC, which, is, which stands for the ORAN Alliance Software Community. So this is a project, uh, this is a Linux Foundation project, and this is mainly uh, responsible for developing what is called as the RIC platforms, okay, which is the RAN Intelligent Controller platform. It also has got certain simulators for the devices, uh, th th those implementations are a little preliminary right now. And then there is also this CU and DU implementation. So these CU and DU implementations are the actual control and data path implementations in the RAN. And uh, the intelligent controller is more like something that is responsible for managing uh, the RAN platforms. And since uh, the RAN intelligent controller is a platform for accessing, uh, is, is a platform for writing application. It also has got SDK for different languages. So for example, there is an SDK for Rust, there is an SDK for Golang, then there is an SDK for Python and CPP and so on. So these are some of the main projects in RAN. Uh, then in the core, there are a couple of famous projects. So free 5 gs free 5 gc and open 5 gs are the core network implementation. So free 5 gc is implemented in Golang. Of course, open air interface also has got a core network of their own. Uh, open 5 gs is a core network implemented in C++, I guess, uh, mostly it is C, okay. And uh, then there is another one, uh, this is a project called as a Magma project. This is kind of an interesting project. This project was initially started by Facebook to bring connectivity to next 3 billion people for the reasons obvious to all of us. Uh, so the, the, this takes a slightly different and an, and an interesting approach to building a network and this is something, uh, so what happens is for example, if you're using this phone and if there is a new implementation of a network, you don't want to change your phone. Obviously that doesn't make sense. Uh, so what, we, uh, what this project does is it has got two gateways. So one is called as an access gateway, which is mainly responsible for speaking with the user. So all the, uh, all, all the, all your, all the protocols that your phone can speak, they, ter they are terminated in the access gateway. So this is kind of a part of what, what is there in the RAN. And then on the federation gateway is something that speaks with the uh, operator network. So there are several, se uh, all of these different components that are available in uh, operator network. Uh, so components mentioned here are from the 4G network, but they are called as different MS in 5G. So this is what it is doing uh, for, spe uh, terminating on the operator side. And everything else is like a very standard uh, distributed enterprise app like thing which, is, which talks gRPC, HTTP2, the standard stuff. Uh, so they have taken a very interesting approach towards uh, building uh, this, uh, which means that you just be standards compliant at the ages and then you can do a lot of innovation of your own. So this is a Magma project is a pretty interesting uh, approach towards that. Uh, finally, uh, uh, this is towards the end of the talk, and, and this is coming. This is where this is something where I'm interested in uh, making a case for building a telecom infrastructure in Rust. So, for example, telecom infrastructure is a very crucial component of any modern society, and such components or such infrastructure components should be built using the best tools available at your disposal. Okay. So for example, 40 years back, some of the best tools that were available were like languages like C, C++ that provided you a nice abstraction over assembly, but 
in the modern world we re and we, we we need languages that provide memory safety that guarantee no data access so something that compiles actually works so rust does provide some of uh, these features um, also it, uh, rust is a non garbage collected language so basically it means there are no tail latencies so what happens in gc languages is if gc comes in your application processing stop, stops and there might be very high tail latency so there are no tail latencies in rust so this is uh, a very strong case for using rust for building something like this uh, of course uh, there are obviously challenges for do doing something like this uh, yeah, so most of the software predominantly in telecom networks has been proprietary, okay? So there are not enough developers who are working in FOSS in this particular space, okay? Rust is relatively new. When I say relatively new, it's been around for seven, eight years. Uh, that is when uh, 1.0 was released, uh, 2015. But that is still relatively new because there are not enough developers who work in Rust. Uh, and uh, then there are a couple of other challenges. There is a lot of bootstrapping required. So for example, uh, telecom world has got a, a lot of its own quirky old protocol thanks to uh, maintaining backwards compatibility. So ASN1 and SCTP are like a couple of examples of those protocols. Uh, so ASN1, um, I'm not sure many of you know about it, but probably your, uh, the, TLS certificates use the ASN, one, of, one form of ASN encoding. But this is like, uh, if you guys know what protobuf is, so this is like protobuf, which defines the message format and then codecs for transmitting the data on the wire. Uh, but this has been around for 40 years now uh, with, uh, with some upgrades. Uh, and SCTP is another transport protocol like TCP. And most of the concepts that you see in modern uh, application layer protocols like quick and http uh, http2 actually you will find qu quite a lot of similarity in that in http so but these are not really supported in asn1 and uh, most of the core network functionality is supported as uh, uh, is specified as a open api and open api tools and rust it's kind of really bad uh, so there are i mean these are some of the challenges uh, so out of these interests, I have started some of these projects myself. So the first project is called as Humpy, which is, I, I named this project as Humpy because this is a place I have been several times and I like that place so much. Uh, this, so this is a uh, ASN1 toolkit, uh, which basically means it's a compiler for ASN1, which compiles ASN1 messages into Rust structures and also implements some of the codecs that are required. And uh, the performance uh, gains that I have seen with this codec are like quite significant. Uh, for example, uh, a C-based a, a codec, this does at least 15 to 20% better than C-based -based codec and at least an order of magnitude better than Golang-based codec. So there are some of uh, interesting performance improvement that I've seen. Uh, Elora is uh, another project which is essentially providing safe ergonomic Rust API over the Linux kernel's SCTP stack. So Linux kernel's SCTP stack has been around for uh, almost 20 years, it's a matured one. Uh, there are no really good API, uh, APIs that were available, so uh, this is a project that I have been, and these are very actively maintained. And then finally is uh, the XA framework Rust. So this is a Rust SDK uh, for uh, Oranesi near Rateric. So if you if you remember seeing those uh, XA, uh, so this is the, uh, I'm a I'm maintainer for this Rust SDK in the Oran software community. So these are some of my Rust projects uh, that I have been working on in this space. Um, yeah, that much, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thanks, FOSS United, for this. If there are any questions, I might take one or two questions, or we can talk offline.